everyone. How's everyone doing? Was the mic on before? Everyone hear me? Give me a why. I'm Dale Pinkert, the Stop Hunter. Hello, Archiga. Lopez, how are you? How'd everyone like that uh, webinar last week on correlations? Were you able to put some things together this week? Notice some relationships that helped you trade? If yes, give me a what, a, a why, and tell me what it was. Probably interested in more actionable information today, right? than a general teaching webinar. Who wants trading ideas? Okay. Flip a coin, buddy. All right, here's the Dixie. Everyone see the Dixie chart? Give me why. Is it showing up okay? Okay. All right. So we've had three up days and a reversal week to the upside in the Dixie here. And, you know, everything's going to turn on the NFP. Uh, the strength in the dollar has mainly been euro weakness. And we'll get to the pairs here. But there's uh, something about this that's not impressive yet to me, although we're up pretty good on the week, maybe about 40, 50 points on the week. Um, the way the s and P's closed, I'm, I'm surprised the dollar isn't doing better. Maybe uh, there might be a weaker number, and maybe we're going to get to an inflection point where uh, just like we had the dollar go up with risk on on the ISM, the ISM was the turning point for the dollar. So you had the S&Ps go up on the ISM. That's how they made their highs for the week. And you had the dollar go up on the ISM. Okay, so uh, perhaps the, the usual correlation of uh, risk on now means a stronger dollar, where risk off actually might begin to mean a weaker dollar. So that's a possibility that we're we're looking at going into the NFP. I'm not that impressed with the action in the dollar. It's a good start. I was a little bit surprised that we we didn't go for these uh, February lows. Probably doesn't have to happen, but um, I look at this chart and at this point, I'm still not completely impressed. Although. When I do look at the euro, it's giving all kinds of uh, negative signs. There's formations that it's breaking down of. It could be, yes. Uh, that It's starting to look that way, that that could start to work that way, Archiga. So, you know, uh, when that happens, uh, the best way to deal with it is Instead of trying to put together the jigsaw puzzle, which I'm usually trying to do, attempting to do by reading correlations and while well, the market's doing this and crude is doing that and the bonds are doing this and oil is doing that and, you know, Euro and Canada are doing that, that you just look at each chart as an individual animal. Right. And you just trade it on its own merit instead of trying to figure out the correlations because they may be changing. And what could happen is it's hard to break old habits. You're going to see the S&P down hard. And I think a few of them, the relationship's not going to change. Like if the S&Ps are really bad from here, I do think USD CAD is good and 
uh, do think Aussie's bad and Euro's bad, but some of these relationships are not correlating as closely. And a lot of people, every time they're going to see the market down, they're going to want to buy the dollar. And that may not work. Or every time the market's up, they're going to start thinking, well, I should be putting on risk and I should buy the euro. But that's not what happened on the ISM. So just be aware that some of these correlations might be changing, breaking down, uh, disconnecting, disjointed. And just trade each chart uh, on its own. Let it stand alone and trade the price action, divergences, et cetera, what you see, instead of trying to be um, a macro analyst trying to make everything fit to make your uh, to come up with a trading decision. You guys get that? Okay, because, you know, anything can happen here on an NFP number tomorrow. But I, I have to tell you that I'm, I'm really not that impressed, although we're higher on the week. It's a reversal week. Friday we closed. Right here on the lows, 78.68. So we're up about 30 pips on uh, six, about 60 points on the week. Okay, it's a decent week. And here's how I think it could go in the S&Ps. You know whether or not it correlates or not. And we had a pretty serious decline in crude oil today, copper today. So I talked about uh, in some of my tweets that this could end up being a failing rally. And in my market uh, daily video updates, that this could be a failing rally and that we have a break back down to clear out these lows before we get a new high. But, you know, they could spin it tomorrow on the NFP and we could be at, four, at new highs. Uh, new highs now, there's going to be pretty good divergence. But everyone has been poo-pooing, sell in May and go away, especially the first day when we were up. And here we are with a nice little reversal week in the S&Ps as well. So I could see it going either way. Right now, I would say if there was no NFP report tomorrow that it favored that this was A, B, C for A, A, B, C, D, E for B, and now we're going to have a C wave to the downside which you would think would put pressure on risk, you know, continues to do so, uh, you know, even though um, the market had a couple up days and that one good up day on the ISM, uh, Aussie continues to make new lows. So Aussie is still correlating even more so um, than some of the other currencies being pressured, Kiwi even weaker than Aussie. So that's my take on the S&Ps. Uh, crude went right to a resistance level I talked about at 106. Came off pretty hard today. That's pretty negative looking, right? So, I mean, the S&Ps got very close to their highs. And uh, all we did was rally back to pro uh, prior support and current resistance and was turned back in a big way. We're almost at new lows for the move. Same thing happened in copper. So we are getting a whiff of uh, deflation in the markets the last few days. Uh, everything rallied back to uh, resistance, S&Ps, crude, and now look at copper. Same type of scenario. Rallied up to 385, you know, natural place for it to fail, rolling over again. So right now I would say, especially on the commodities front, that the the bears are in control. They're on the verge of controlling uh, the S&Ps for at least a correction. And the dollar bulls have a chance to make make some hay out of this too. 
quick look at gold. I know there's some gold traders in here. How you doing, Israel? Gold, you know, falling, never really recovered much. Uh, trend is down to sideways. Maybe basing can advantage another pop on an NFP. Maybe the number, a weak number, will actually be bullish for uh, the S&Ps and uh, bearish for the dollar because they'll spin a weak number as, you know, QE3 is around the corner. Right, Archiga? So that's a look at outside markets, okay? So, so far I would say the uh, uh, weakest response to this commodity weakness and potential S&P weakness has really been in the Dixie. So tomorrow's going to be, like they say, almost every day in the markets, a critical day. Okay, let's look at some of the pairs. Now, can everyone see the Canadian chart here? Canadian daily? Is it showing up? Give me a why. Okay. Pretty impressive day. Uh, we had some divergence here. You know, this could have been a one, two, three driver, or maybe this is one, this is two, and we're going to get another one up here. I think there's some uh, pretty good resistance at the around 99.18. We're coming up to monthly pivots, but uh, this is starting to look like the bottom's in. Okay, we took out the stops last week, and we're back above. Anyone who got out under uh, 98.41 is saying, well, I don't know. I got stopped out of that trade. I can't buy into it now. But if the S&Ps are going to 13.20, there's a decent pop coming in USD CAD. Some of the shorter-term stuff says, you know, it's also possible that uh, we're still going to have some type of pullback. We had nice divergence down here on the four-hour um, had some back there on the one hour, but if you look at a longer term four hour, yeah, yeah, nice divergence. So very possible that this was one A, B, C, and now we're into, you know, three up here in Canada. So especially the way the crude looked, right? I mean, what the, that crude chart is supportive for this to start to rally, correct? Everyone remember that relationship? So I have some uh, strategies to take advantage of this if you'd be interested uh, in working with us in the room or through my tweets or trade copier. Uh, let's move over to the pound now. Uh, pound has been down every day this week. Not dramatically, but we've worked our way back towards the rollover wedge line here. Comes in around 61.40, 61.50. Uh, we have the makings of a reversal week in the pound. Uh, cleaned out, I think, almost every bear. Uh, you could go back for weeks and took out these stops. Uh, the only bears left are here and here. So this is ripe for a sell-off. I thought short term that there might be a chance for at least a fib retracement. It all all depends on the NFP number here, and even the potential for a marginal new high. Uh, why do I think there is chance for a marginal new high in pound dollar? Anyone know? All right, that's RSI is confirmed. You're talking about this, yeah. There are there are some uh, short-term divergences on the one hour. It's starting to get the look of a wedge, so there might be actually a place setting up on the long side in pound. They may have to clean out some stops under one and a half, but there is potential for at least a fib retracement of this 150 or so pip move. 
with an outside chance because we had a confirmed high on the four hour. And actually we had a uh, confirmed high on the daily up here. It was over 70. So now if we just had a quick push up here, uh, the daily and the four hour would diverge. And depending upon how it did it, maybe the one hour would too. Everyone clear on that? All right, we have uh, we had a couple events here, technical events, and the uh, something else I wrote about. I I talked about a uh, rising wedge in euro. We diverged all over the place here, making these highs. Uh, rising wedge has a bearish implication that it's going to retrace how much. Not something else we teach. 100% of the move. Uh, we're underway. You can't rule out uh, perhaps some type of reflex rally back to a wedge line. Uh, looks like we only have two drives here for anything short term. But the bigger picture on the daily is this is looks to me like a descending triangle. And the descending triangle has negative implications. So you have a negative wedge within a negative descending triangle and they both point towards bearish outcomes. So you're, you're going to want to look for a rally to uh, get short euro if they give you one. That's my opinion here. Perhaps the pound outperforms and is stronger on the next rally and perhaps uh, euro only bounces but I do believe we're going to attack this line, and I believe we're going to break it, and that that's going to give you a measured move back to the lows in January. So I guess you could say I'm bearish euro. And it's not just an opinion. It's a couple of formations that are bearish formations, okay? You know, you could be wrong over the high of this week. Any questions on Euro? Okay. I'm trying to bottom pick US dollar yen. Uh, not that I think there's going to be a dramatic move here, but I thought we were due for at least a uh, correction of this 455th decline. The low of the week is right there at the 79.63, and thought there was potential to perhaps rally back to 81.5 to 82. Um, this most likely works if the S&Ps don't crater, because if the S&Ps crater, <clears throat> there should be a rush to bonds, which would be bearish, because I do think even after a rally here or here, there's another chance or decline to the 77 and a half level in the end. So this is just a little bit of a uh, counter trend trying to trade a correction. This most likely is a wave four, something like this, and then we get a five. been pretty wild trying to reverse here but uh, it's still my contention that this is not done going down until we take out this low made in June of uh, 2010 uh, that's 8066 so we're another 60 pips away and I think we'll take that out we'll see some type of 79 handle so this too still favors uh, Euro shorts and pound longs until we get down there. Just because you're wrong about being short doesn't mean that it's right to get long. It stops for money management. You're very welcome.
Okay, so uh, still looking for lower numbers. We are diverging here. Uh, Swiss on a short-term chart, we have a two dry formation here, makes, you know, similar mirror image to Euro. You know, where you've had two drives, maybe we're going to get another one down here tomorrow. There'll be divergence there. And it looks like the Swiss could push up one more time. Uh, we had some divergence. Uh, the most I was looking for was uh, about 93-ish. But maybe it doesn't have that much in it. I was thinking it could push up to this level, 93. That's another 170 pips before another shorting opportunity came in. But again, it was a nice little pop, but, you know, all it did was correct this decline. It could give this up in a hurry, too. Kiwi is uh, the ugliest currency on the board. You know, you're tempted to bottom pick it, but uh, there's no reason to do so yet. Still looks ugly. You know, maybe we, we're going to have something like this from here. Uh, maybe headed towards the 77 level before it's done. Just like Aussie, you know, you're tempted to bottom pick it. Back here, I thought there was a chance for 105, but then after the RBA surprised the market with a half a point cut, quarter better, more than they thought, um, felt late. And I, you know, you're tempted to bottom pick this, especially if the S&Ps can uh, uh, recover and make one more push up towards 1440. You've got to think there's going to be some type of Aussie rally. You know, you've had two drives here. So maybe there is one left. Tomorrow, the next 72 hours are going to be rock and roll markets, guys. So... Have your numbers ready and be prepared for whatever is going to happen because everything will happen. If you're interested in uh, being in a live trading room environment, I invite you to consider joining our service. If you want more immediate uh, uh, trade call recommendations, I can deliver them on Twitter to you too. So, I could open it up for questions for a few minutes. Go ahead, fire away. Anything? Any pairs? No, late after. I figured we'd get some type of bear market rally, maybe back to uh, 82 first. Maybe one more drive down here in Euro Yen. That's the way it looks. One, two, one more to come. So, I mean, the way the charts are set up, it looks like the dollar is going to pop. One more time in here. I, I'm flat into NFP and I'll react to it. You're welcome. Okay, everybody, thanks for your attention. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, Mauricio. Hey, Kareem, Chuck, you're very welcome. See you, FX George. Okay, Archiga, Fernando. Bye, everyone.